The Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham. Read by Jeremy Clyde. One of the luckiest accidents in my wife's life is that she happened to marry a man who was born on the 26th of September. But for that, we should both of us undoubtedly have been home in Midwich on the night of the 26th, 27th, with consequences which I have never ceased to be thankful she was spared. Because it was my birthday, however, we set off on the morning of the 26th for London and a mild celebration. Very pleasant, too. A few satisfactory calls, lobster and Chablis at Wheeler's, Ustinov's latest extravaganza, a little supper, and so back to the hotel. Next morning, a leisurely departure on the way back to Midwich, a pause in train, which is our nearest shopping town, for a few groceries, then on along the main road, through the village of Stouch, then the right-hand turn onto the secondary road for... But no. Half the road is blocked by a pole, from which dangles a notice, road closed. And in the gap beside it stands a policeman who holds up his hand. So I stop. The policeman advances to the offside of the car. Sorry, sir. Road is closed. Do you mean I'll have to go round by the Opley Road? I'm afraid that's closed too, sir. Not both roads, surely. Uh, we live in Midwich, you know, Constable. I know, sir. But there's no way there just now. If I were you, sir, I'd go back to train until we get it clear. Janet opens the door on her side and picks up her shopping bag. Well, I'll walk on and you come along when the road's clear, she tells me. The Constable hesitates. Then he lowers his voice. Well, seeing as you live there, ma'am, I'll tell you, but it's confidential, like. It isn't no use trying, ma'am. Nobody can't get into Midwich, and that's a fact. We stare at him. But why on earth not, says Janet. Well, that's just what they're trying to find out, ma'am. Now, if you were to go to the Eagle in train, I'll see you're informed as soon as the road's clear. Janet and I looked at each other. Well, she said to the constable, it seems very queer, but if you're quite sure we can't get through... I am that, ma'am. It's orders, too. Uh, we'll let you know as soon as may be. Very well, I agreed. Gayford's my name, Richard Gayford. I'll tell the eagle to take a message for me in case I'm not there when it comes. I turned back the way we had come. Once we were on the other side of Stouch Village, I pulled off the road into a field gateway. Shall we cut across the fields and see what's going on, I said. Let's, Janet agreed, opening her door. What made it all the more odd was that Midwich was, almost notoriously, a place where things did not happen. Janet and I had lived there just over a year then, and found this to be almost its leading feature. Midwich has, or rather had, lived and drowsed upon its good soil in Arcadian undistinction for a thousand years. We locked the car, climbed the gate, and started over the field of stubble, keeping well into the hedge. Halfway across the pasture beyond brought us to the top of the rise, and we were able to look out across Midwich, not that much of it was visible for trees, but we could see the church spire sticking up by the elms. Also, in the middle of the next field, I could see four or five cows lying down, apparently asleep. I remember thinking rather far back in my mind that there was something not quite right about that, but we went on. A voice hallooed at us, away on the left. I looked round and made out a khaki-clad figure in the middle of the next field. He was calling out something unintelligible, but the way he was waving his stick was without doubt a sign for us to go back. I stopped. Oh, come on, Richard. He's miles away, said Janet impatiently and began to run on ahead. I decided to follow her. She had perhaps twenty yards start of me by now, and then, just as I started off, she staggered, collapsed without a sound, and lay quite still. I stopped dead. If she had gone down with a twisted ankle, or had simply tripped, I should have run on to her. But this was so sudden and so complete that for a moment I thought, idiotically, that she'd been shot. The stop was only momentary. Then I hurried towards her. But I did not reach her. I went out so completely that I never even saw the ground come up to hit me.